how do you know if a business is able to employ capital at high rates of return over long periods of time? It's a great question. And, you know, Munger would say, why should it be easy to get rich? You know, <laughs> so that the ability to answer that question has the possibilities to make you insanely wealthy if you know how to answer that properly. And it's not easy to answer that properly. So let's take a business like Geico. Geico is a direct writer of auto insurance, unlike State Farm. If I buy a policy through State Farm, State Farm pays 10% or so of that premium to the agent who, you know, independently owned agent, uh, which is bring that policy in. Geico uses a call center. And, and so it has approximately maybe, I don't know, 8, 12, 10, 12% advantage over State Farm and Allstate. And that's a secular advantage. And that advantage has allowed Geico to go from nothing to, it used to be 2, 3% of the, of the auto market. Now it's 8, 10, 12%. And they're continuing to grow. But Progressive, which is also a direct writer of policies, has run circles around Geico. So Progressive invested very early in telemetry technology, which gave them a lot more data about how the cars were being driven by these drivers. And that allowed them to have a much better understanding of the risk. So they were willing to, they were, they knew that certain drivers, you could offer even lower premiums than Geico, bring them in and they'd still be profitable. Whereas Geico would look at the driver and say, I really can't take this guy below a certain premium because they were missing some data points. So that's an example of how, and Berkshire is now trying to fix that. They're behind the eight ball trying to help Geico catch up to Progressive. My two cents is that Progressive is really good at technology and they've had a long head start. and They're continuing to jam on this. So I think Geico is going to have a hard time. They might get there five years, 10 years, they might get there. Uh, they still have the advantage against the other player, but they're not the best. They were the best 10 years ago. But they're not the best today. And so one would not have been able to predict 10 or 15 years ago that we'd have this kind of issue come up with Geico, right? We just look at Geico and say, oh, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, they've got this advantage. They just keep chewing through and getting more market share. They've got great customer service. Who doesn't like the gecko? You know, on and on. And um, you guys might not remember this, but you know, there were these series of ads Geico had for the caveman. Do you remember the caveman ads? So the caveman ads were hot and heavy when we met Warren for lunch. So my daughter's, my daughter asked Warren, have you met the caveman? Okay. And Warren said, you know, I'm sorry. I haven't met the caveman. Can you tell the caveman we really like him? You know, it's so, so funny. Anyway, so, I mean, I think that this, you know, or if you look at Coke and the sugar issue and where does that go 10, 20, 30 years from now? Is it an issue? Is it a non-issue? Is most of their portfolio non-sugar, carbonated versus non-carbonated, you know, whatever. So I think that if you look at Visa and MasterCard, incredible businesses, what do those businesses look like 10 or 20, 30 years from now? There's so much happening in payments. American Express, so much happening in payments. It may not be easy to figure those things out. So this question we can clearly tell which businesses generate high returns on employed capital. That's black and white. It's in the balance sheet. We can tell income statement. It's easy. The nature of how long that can continue becomes a much harder question. And that's why we want a margin of safety. And that's why we want these aha moments. But if we can figure that out in some cases, you know, I'll give you an example, which is going on right now in my portfolio. I'll talk a little bit about one of the portfolio holdings. There's a company in India that I invested in about three years ago called Indian Energy Exchange. It is a network effects business that basically has 95, 98% market share where electricity on the spot market is bought and sold through their servers. And whatever is bought and sold through their servers they keep 1% of the transacted amount. When I first invested in the business, it's, there's a company called American Tower. And American Tower basically owns, I don't know, 
tens of thousands of these cell phone towers. And it's a great business because by the time you get the second tenant on that tower, anything incremental coming in is like, you know, almost 100% margin. And then when you go from 3G to 4G to 5G, each one of those is adding more complexity and such. And once AT&T architects its network and has towers in certain positions, if you take out one tower, it affects how, what I'm saying is that you can't take out one tower and put another one a mile away. It affects the whole network. So in effect, the owner of that tower has a advantage where AT&T is probably going to keep paying rent well beyond the lease term because their network topography would change so much if they had to redo these things every time. So for a number of reasons, American Tower is an incredibly great business and it's been a great business for a very long time. One of my friends used to be a fund manager at a large fund house. And they had an invest, investment in American Tower. And they went, uh, they had a, like an investor day. So they invited all these, you know, fund managers to their headquarters. And they were going to have some, you know, meetings and presentations and then play golf in the, golf in the afternoon. So my friend showed up a little bit early and he went to the CFO's office. He knew the CFO. And he saw the CFO just sitting there with his feet on his desk. So he asked him, hey, you know, you don't look like you got anything to do. He said, yeah, I don't have much to do. He says, don't you need to do deals? You know, you guys keep buying new towers. Don't you need to do new, new tower deals? Like, so just sitting with your feet on it. He said, look, everyone has my number. Anyone who has a tower for sale, they know how to reach me. And they also know exactly what I'm going to pay. He says, there's no voodoo or work involved, the call comes in, we tell them, yes, here's the terms, here's where you sign, we wire the money, we move on, my feet are still on my desk. Okay, you know, I don't need to kind of, you know, go have a root canal about this. That's the definition of a great business. Okay. And when you look at something like American Tower, you know, it's likely that's going to endure for a long period of time. Now, there could be a disruptor, Elon could put everything in satellites for example, okay? And total, at that point, he's not going to have his feet on this desk. His feet are going to be shaking, okay, <laughs> under the desk. But who knows what, how far that, that is and what the odds are and whatever else. And so I think that when I look at a business like IEX that we invested in, it was about 3% of India's electricity was flowing through their servers when we invested three years ago. Now it is north of 7%. It's become 7, 7.5%. It's grown a lot. And India's per capita usage of electricity is going up as well. And the government of, uh, announced some policy changes where it's probably going to get to 20 to 25% of the total electricity. It might even go higher, it might be 30, 35%. It's huge to take a country the size of India where the per capita electricity usage is so small and then you collect... And the way that business works, 75% of revenue is net income. Okay. When I visited their offices, I visited the offices in New Delhi a few times. It reminded me of Chuck Akri and, and my friend with American Tower. I saw this country club, relaxed place. Nobody's really stressed. They got about like 40 software guys who don't seem to have much to do. And they got a 30, 40 other people who also don't seem to have much to do. Everything's running through like two or three servers they have. And the money is flowing. You know, everyone pays them in advance. They have no bad debts, nothing. And whatever comes in, they have no expenses. Okay. It's a bunch of, you know, bits running around on a server. And they collect 1%. They've got no expenses. They just pay for the software people. So, as their revenue grows, like this 80 person company might become, if it becomes 10 times the size in revenue, it might go to 120 people, 50% increase in people for 10 X the revenue and the 72% might become 82%. Okay. So now the question is how long can this continue? Okay. I don't know. You know, we've, we've had so far five X or six X return since we invested. 
well done, Monish. You know, like I said, we don't learn nothing. IEX teaches us nothing. Okay, it just feels good. Okay, and but I don't know how long it can go on. It could go on for 20 years. Okay, if it goes on for 20 years, hallelujah. You know, God loves me. You know, it could go on. It, it might also might be like in three years, some policy changes come in and something happens or whatever, you know, upsets the apple cart. We don't know. It's uh, some of these things are kind of hard to figure out, but my best guess is let it ride. So we have a India fund where IEX is now like 40% of the pie. And we're like saying, it's okay. We just keep our investors informed. And I said at 95%, when it gets to 95%, which it might, the way it's going, as long as we can just let everyone else, everyone know, listen, guy. 95% 95% of your money is in one stock and, you know, disclose that properly. If you don't like this, you can exit or whatever else. I think we are okay. But, you know, you don't get many, many opportunities like that. And I used to, I made a mistake with IEX. I used to own 5% of the business, uh, which, was the, which was the most we could buy. And then COVID hit and I was concerned. It always looked expensive. You know, that's the thing. When you look at Fair Isaac, like if I look at IEX today, trailing earnings, it might be trading at 80 or 100 times a Okay, because it's a spectacular business that's growing like crazy, you know, so it's never going to be at eight times early. So anyway, I think that question is a great question and it's a great question to think about. And you only need to figure it out once. You only need to find one IEX or one American tower. And if you're right about that runway for 30 or 40 years, just sit there and let it rip and you're done. That's it.